So, what is the shortest path between two points? And you say, oh, it's easy, this is an easy question. No, it's not easy. It, it may seem obvious in a flat plane, but it's not obvious in a non-flat plane. But we're going to do it in a flat plane in two dimensions, uh, just because that's the first place to start. So here I have point x1, y1. I want to get to point x2, y2 in the shortest with the path. And this is the thing, it's, it's a variational problem, but we're not... We're not trying to minim we're not trying to vary one value. We're trying to vary a function. We're trying to vary the function that is this line. So that makes it much more complicated. And this is our first uh, step into the calculus of variations. Um, so in general, we have this. If I have some integral like this, so j could be anything. I'm just calling it j because I don't know, j is kind of cool. And I have some function. And I want to minimize, I want to find the function that minimizes the integral. I want to minimize the function. I want to find this function such that this integral is minimized. And that's what we're doing here, right? Because I want to integrate along this path and find the distance. And I want to find what function minimizes that integration. It turns out that the solution's not trivial, but super, super, super useful and very important. And it's so useful, I'm going to do it in purple. Uh, this is the Euler-Lagrange equation. I'm not going to drive it. Okay, but we need to use this to solve this problem, and it turns out that we can use this for a whole bunch of mechanics problems. So this says that if I have a function of x, y, and y prime, and y prime, just to be clear, y prime is dy dx. I mean, and I'm using the variables x and y, but we could use uh, x and t or you know whatever it doesn't matter and that's what's great about this it doesn't matter what your variables are but I need uh, this integral depends on the x function the y the value of x it could value in y and the derivative of y then the function that minimizes this has to satisfy this equation that says the partial of f with respect to y minus the derivative and remember these are partials not derivatives and that's an actual derivative the derivative with respect to x of the partial of f with respect to y prime is equal to zero so let's do it how do you do this to show that the path between two points is a straight line so let's pick a little piece right here what I'm gonna do is say uh, what's the path link I'm gonna say L equals the integral from, I'm just going to call this 1 to 2, 1 to 2 of ds, where ds is the sum of the little pieces along that function. So in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, in two dimensions, then ds is going to be, you can imagine this, right? There's my little path piece. This is dx, that's dy, that's a y. So that would be the hypotenuse, so it would be the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And that's my function I'm going to put in there, but I can't do that, right? Because um, I don't I don't have it in this form. Right? I have a dx and I have a dy. I just want dx. So let's write this as uh, ds equals the square root of 1 plus dy dy dx squared, well, I don't know what I'm doing here, dx, I had a trick, I factored out the dx, right, because this is, um, I divide everything by dx squared, yeah, that's right, so then I have, um, I want to say this is, uh, yeah, 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 that's going to be, this is dy dx squared, right? I should have left it that way. So it's, d, it's equal to the square root of 1 plus, this is going to be dy dx quantity squared. It's not the second derivative. It's a quantity squared. So this is actually y prime squared. Now I don't have the dy in there, right? I don't have to worry about that. I have it in this form. So that's my f. So I can now do my partial derivative. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the partial derivative of this with respect to f. I mean y. That's pretty easy. The partial of f with respect to y is equal to 0. Why? Well, there's no y in there, right? And it's a partial derivative, so it doesn't really matter. That's easy. Now I can take the partial of f with respect to y prime. So I'm going to write this as, 
I, actually, this is not f. f is just the square root part. So I'm going to write it as 1 plus y prime squared to the 1 half, because I like to think of things that way. So if I take the partial of that with respect to y prime, I can take use the chain rule. It's going to be the derivative of this, which is 1 half times 1 plus y prime squared to the negative 1 half. Right, I have to decrease that by a power of 1. Now I have to take the derivative of the stuff inside. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of y, the partial, with y prime squared is going to be 2y prime. And the 2's cancel. So now I need to find d dx, why well, I, I could, of the partial of f with respect to y prime. I could do that, right? And, and I would have to take the derivative of all these terms, but I'm not going to. Because I know this is, since this is 0, this is 0. The derivative of f prime, f with respect to y prime is 0, which means the partial of f with respect to y prime is a constant. Right? If I take the derivative and I get 0, then this part right here has to be a constant. Okay, so let me move to my next page. And I will say this. I hear my function, uh, partial of f with respect to y prime. It's going to be this stuff. I'm going to write it as uh, y prime divided by the square root of 1 plus y prime squared equals c, some constant. So uh, let's just multiply both sides by this to get rid of the fraction, and I get y prime equals c, the square root of 1, plus y prime squared. Now I'm going to square both sides, and I get y prime squared equals c squared, but I mean, you could just call it c if you want. A lot of people do that. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write it as a c squared because I care about you guys, uh, times 1 plus y prime squared. Now let's multiply this out, and I get y prime squared equals c squared plus c squared y prime squared. Now I'm going to subtract this from both sides. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to say uh, y prime squared minus c squared y prime squared. And I'm doing way more work than I need to. You could just, you could stop earlier, but uh, equals c squared. And then I'm going to factor out the y prime, and I get y prime squared times 1 minus c squared equals c squared. And now I get y, now I'm going to divide both sides by this y prime squared equals c squared over 1 minus c squared and then I take the square root y prime equals a constant. I'm going to call it k. So this is my solution right there. I want a function f such that the, uh, the, the slope is constant. That's what that says. This says dy dx equals some constant. Well then what's y and what's x? Well now I, I'm actually done because if the slope is constant I can use this. y equals some constant, I'll call it now m, actually I should have called that m, that would have been funny, m x plus b, right? And I can get that by integrating uh, both sides. I can actually, let's do that. So let's say dy equals m dx, I integrate both sides and I get y equals uh, mx from x1 to x2. So that's going to be m, and this is from y1 to y2. So I get y2 minus y1 equals mx2 minus x1. And that's my function, which is a line, the end. So, I mean, I think it's confusing sometimes to see this because you kind of have to do two things that I don't really like. One, use this Euler-Lagrange formula, but I didn't show where that came from. It's kind of, it's, I don't really want to derive it right now. And number two is this getting this y prime squared, this y prime in there, getting rid of the dy and instead getting a dy prime. That's the other trick. You need a function of, of x, y, and y prime. Okay. So we'll do another problem, um, but there's your first introduction to the Euler-Lagrange equation.